nga ba? Hola! Konnichiwa! Naragsak ay isang bayo aming hindi siya dati tibigan. Hi! Mabuhay! Welcome to Vegan City! The only heritage city in the Philippines! We are the best friends of students of the University of Northern Philippines. And on behalf of our university, we will be your local tour guide for the rest of your vegan escapade. So we hope that you will enjoy your stay here with us and share the historical sites of vegan. The city of Vigan is a fourth income class component city and the capital of Ilocos Sur. The city's full name was Villa Fernandina or town of Ferdinand in honor of Prince Ferdinand, the first son of King Philip II. As the city grew, it was later renamed Ciudad Fernandina de Vigan or Ferdinand City of Vigan. Vigan City is made up of 39 barangays, 9 of them are Poblacion areas. The city was an important coastal trading post in pre-colonial times. Seafaring merchants came to barter exotic goods from Asian kingdoms in exchange for gold, beeswax, and other mountain products from the Cordilleras. Immigrants, mostly Chinese, settled in vegan and intermarried with the natives. Local historian Damaso King said that, the Americans wanted to bomb vegan because of the Japanese presence. But the bombing was aborted and redirected to another area because of Father Joseph Fleckham and the love of a Japanese soldier, Juan Ilocano. For this museum, this museum is an ancestral house and birthplace of priest patriot Padre Jose Burgos one of the three mighty priests known as Gumbursa, which stands for their surnames, Gomez, Burgos, and Zamora. Padre Burgos was a Filipino Catholic priest accused of mutiny by the Spanish colonial in 19th century. He was placed in mock trial and summary executed in Cavite along with the two third other clergymen. Going back to the museum, known as the Padre Burgos House, it is a two-story structure located near the provincial capital. It was renovated by the Filipino Foundations Incorporated and inaugurated on May 3, 1975. In January 1989, a contract of lease was executed by the Locosur Historical and Cultural Foundation Incorporated, placing the memorabilia for 50 years and turning over the administration to the National Museum. In the previous years, the museum was filled with the different artifacts like the Iloko Kan Kam Kanai Itneg material. Culture memorabilia of Padre Burgos and his family and add other more but the highlight among all the is 14 painting of Pasi Revolt by Don Esteban Villanueva, which is now at the National Museum located beside the Burgos Museum. Pasi Revolt happened in 1807 when rebel Ilocanos marched from all over the north to overthrow the Spaniards governing the Pigat. This revolt was brought about by Spain's move to forbid the production of sale of goods that can be supplied by Spain through its maritime trade of Baya Acapulco, which included white. The National Museum of Vegan City is located just beside the Burgos Museum and it is the former provincial jail. The jail makeover was initiated during the term of former Governor Luis Chavez Sinson in 2013. The provincial governor, meanwhile, transferred the provincial jail to nearby town Bantay. The museum is the best example of an Ilocano house called Balay ng Batokan Kayo for its first floor is made up of stones and the upper level is made up of wood. El Pedro Carino was born in the year 1890 inside the provincial jail, for his mother visited his father, who is the jail warden way back then. That is why the second floor of the museum is where his memorabilia can be found. 
Elpiza Quirino is the sixth president of the Philippines. He ran again in the year 1953 election but was defeated by nationalista Ramon Magsaysay. Quirino married Alicia Siquillo on 1921. The couple had five children, Tomas, Armando, Norma, Victoria, and Fe. Only Quirino, his son, and his daughter Victoria survived when the Japanese massacred the family during the war. On the first room at the right side is where we can see his diploma from the University of the Philippines where he earned his law degree. And on the other room is where we can find the picture of the Quirino family, the bed where he was born, his collections of cranes, shoes, and first-class Barong Tagalogs. Going down the museum is another room that keeps the Ilocano Tingian collections. Upon entering, one will see the Dada Pilan or the Basi Extractor. On the right side of the room is where the Katoko or Ilocano hats made out of white squash, the Tingian collections, and the work of Honorable Divi Sabaliano that depicts the Ilocano culture and the Ilocano notable persons can be found. On the other side of the room is the collections of the 14 paintings of 1807 Basi Revolt painted by Don Esteban Villanueva. Going out of the room, one will pass by the old cell that is used before. Going straight is another room that keeps the photographs of natural attractions in Ilocos region. Tres Martires is the squad of the three classes that visitors can visit here in Vigan City. The plaza is located beside the capital and is just in front of Burgos and National City. The plaza was formerly known as Tres Martires, but it is known as the Vicente Singson Encarnacion Plaza, named after the grandfather of Ilocos's former Governor Honorable Luis Chavez Singson. In this plaza is where we can see the three markers dedicated to the the first writer is Marcelino Pisologo, also known as Mena Pisologo. He was a Filipino politician, poet, writer, and playwright. He was known for being one of the representatives of Ilocos in the Malolos Congress and being one of the signatories of Malolos Constitution. Born in Vigan City, he became the first governor of Ilocos and he popularized Ilocano art and literature. As a dramatist, he wrote Salzuela entitled Código Municipal. Being one of the most respected Ilocanos, one of the streets in the city was named after him. The famous Calle Crisologo or Mena Crisologo Street. Next is Pedro Bucanet, the father of Ilocano literature. Blind sister, he is acknowledged as the author of the Ilocano epic Iyag de Lama, or Life of Lama. The epic is all about the eponymous leader of Ilocano, who is Lamha. It was also Bukanek who translated the Doctrina Cristiana in Iloco. His surname is led to Bukanega, the Ilocano equivalent of Palagrasa. And last is Leon C. Pechan. He is acknowledged the father of Ilocano poetry. In their generation, he is known as the most creative Ilocano writer for he wrote some novels, short stories, essays, and hundreds of books. In the year 1999, Vigan City declared the UNESCO World Heritage Site and that it is one of the few towns left in the Philippines whose old structures have mostly remained intact and it is well known for its colossal streets and the unique architecture of the Philippine colonial area which uses native Philippine and oriental building sites and construction in colonial Spanish architecture. In May 2015, Vigan was officially recognized as one of the new seven wonder cities together with Beirut, Doha, Durban, Havana, Kuala Lumpur, and La Paz. The new seven wonders foundation president and founding member Bernard Weber led a ceremony at St. Paul Cathedral where he handed the bronze plaque to the former Vigan mayor, Honorable Eva Gray Simpson Medina, signifying the city's election as one of the new seven wonder cities. The City Hall of Vigan was a former extension of the provincial jail, but today it functions and serves as the office of different local government units 
of the city and the office of our very own city mayor, Honorable Juan Carlos S. Medina, and our vice mayor, Honorable Lourdes D.J. Bakiran. Plaza Salcedo. Filipino have a tradition of first paying respect to the church of a certain place to ask the guidance of Almighty God. In vegan's case, visitors may visit the vegan cathedral. Having fulfilled the local tradition, one may now play the role of being a tourist. Right in front of the vegan cathedral is Plaza Salcedo, formerly known as the Garden Plaza Day after the Spanish conqueror Juan de Salcedo, who subdued the early native settlement in vegan and established upon the Villa Fernandina for the monarchs of Spain in 1572. With this, Juan de Salcedo founded the third of many Spanish settlements in Philippines to honor this Spanish founder. This later, a monument was erected in the city square here. It is also important to note that Juan de Salcedo was the site of Cabrera Silang's execution in September of 1760. The first woman leader of the Philippine Revolution was publicly hung there to serve as a warning to the by the Salcedo Abuse, which was placed in the elevated plaza during the 17th century as the plaza's center pool. In this plaza is where the diorama of world's man-made wonders can be seen. The plaza's reservoir was added in the 70s to store water. The city saw it as a creative solution to the need of water during times when fires occur in the city for it has suffered destructive fires many times in the history, but in recent days, the reservoir was converted into another attraction, which is the Dancing Cup. Through the creation of one of the well-known Sun of Province, Honorable Jose Benito Sinson, the show starts at 7.30 in the evening, Mondays to Sundays. Our Sobispado Leban Tomoya is the only surviving Archbishop of Manila who is Vegan Cathedral, or St. Metropolitan Cathedral, is an imposing creamy white building built in the earthquake baroque style with the thick bad dresses to support its true calamities. The first church was built from this site in 1974 and was damaged by an earthquake. The influence of vegan Chinese residents on the design may be seen in the four buttocks as a sign of prosperity in Chinese and the octagonal shape of the bell tower that is 15 meters high away from the main building for a purpose of not destroying the church if ever earthquake will happen. It is 20 meters high and it is surrounded by a large bronze weather cup that is said to symbolize Saint Peter. Inside is where one can also see the impressive altar surrounded with hammered silver panels. Plaza Burgos. Plaza Burgos is the smallest of the two major plazas in the city. It can be found just right beside the St. Paul Cathedral's bell tower. This plaza was built to remember the murder job of Father Jose P. Burgos, one of Vigas' illustrious sons put to death by the Spanish. He fought for the ancestral reforms to ease the inequality suffered by the Filipino priests during this time. They are collectively known in the Philippine history as the Gumbursa, which stand for their surnames, Gomez, Burgos, and Zamora. Here, you can just watch the people walking by, kids playing in the park and skateboarders in the plaza square. The plaza is also known for its empanadahan and local food. That is why visitors are enjoyed not to leave vegan without trying our very own empanada. A visit to Vigar will not be complete without tasting its famous vegan empanada. 
you can choose to sample this tasty delight food in the establishment that dot the city or the empanada stalls in the market and plazas. At around 35 pesos each, it's quite cheap to have as many as you need it to fulfill your hunger after touring the city. The vegan empanada is much in keeping with vegan people's love for vegetables in their cuisine. It is similar to a thin taco that is fried to a crisp with vegetable and meat filling. Rice flour is used for making the crust or the shell. The galapong or rice flour dough is made the day before it is used. A chuete or orange food color, salt and oil are mixed into the rice dough. The dough mixture is then kneaded as thinly as possible on a banana leaf or wax paper is a good substitute. Vegan empanadas vegetable filling is made up of green papaya that is grated, toge or mung bean sprouts, mongo or mung bean, and shredded carrots. Its meat filling consists of full egg and skinless vegan longanisa. Vegan longaniza is an Ilocano sausage delicacy with a plenty of garlic and spices in the mixture. This longaniza is distinct from other native longaniza version because it is small and plump. It is not sweet unlike the popular longaniza we used to eat. The way to describe its taste is, it is spicy, salty, and garlicky. So if you are used to taste of sweet meat like a traditional longaniza, then you might think twice before cooking this sausage. To make this sausage more authentic, use sukang iloko or native vinegar. But there is none available. Using cane vinegar or apple cider vinegar will suffice. Bagnet is an Ilocano pork dish that is popular because of its double fried crispiness. It is cooked in lard in a big kawali over an old school wood fired cement oven. Kasim is the part of the pork that is used for the bagnet. It is deep fried with salt for 2-3 to three hours until it softens and becomes red. The best way to know if it is cooked is by touching it. The oil is removed afterwards. Then, the fried pork is allowed to settle for 15 minutes before putting it back and frying it again for maximum crispiness. tragic event is an interesting impetus for establishing a museum. However, it is from where the intent for converting the imposing century-old family mansion of the Crisologo into a museum started. Flores Crisologo was the patriarch of the clan and a congressman known for being responsible for landmark legislation. He authored the laws behind the creation of the Northwest State University, the University of Northern Philippines. On a Sunday in October 19. While he was inside the St. Paul Cathedral, Congressman Crisologo was shot in the head. Honorable Flora Crisologo's murder remains unsolved to this day. The mansion is open for public and is free. Inside is where the view, the antiques memorabilia and possessions of the Crisologo's death with history. On the first floor is where we can see the antique palesa where Flora Crisologo's wife survived and attend on her life while she was pregnant. 
her child was given the name of Bolet because of that incident. There is a central exhibit in the house that shows the blooded clothing of the late congressman. Simbana Basit was built in the 1850s and is just a sort of a pile of stones and mausoleum. It is the only chapel in the locus that has a beautiful esplanada hung with bells. What makes it unique is the statue of the crucified Christ found inside the main altar. Simbaan Abbasid is an Ilocano term which literally means small church. And the church is indeed petite. It can only occupy a hundred. It is more of a capital and a cemetery chapel. The church is dedicated to the Santo Cristo or Apulakai, which is set at the dome central retablo of the chapel. This well-preserved chapel, done in the neoclassical style, has a facade supported by the rectangular columns and a dome with a pair of Baroque-style volutes and some floral details. Started in 1610, it was probably the first built church with the permanent materials in the Ilocos. Blessed on November 9, 1852, this church is built for the Indios, which they call as the less fortunate people in the Spanish era. Its floors are made mostly of granite slabs, were mostly used as a ballast by the Chinese trading junks left behind on the return trip to China. The church is best made for earthquakes because Philippines is one of the countries that are in the ring of fire. This site is located to enduring historic and cultural ties between the Kenyan and Spaniards. Little Hill originally called Pagpantayan is one of the most significant historical sites in the city, where a watchtower was constructed during the Spanish period to observe the approach of galleons and pirates. Years later, it became the city's water reservoir and favorite picnic ground. Pagpantayan, Yakin Town, and Dirty part of Megan City. I'm talking about getting literally dirty like molding a clay, spinning it, and creating something beautiful. We are at Megan's Pagpurnayan located at Barangay 7, Pagpurnayan, Megan City. Its name Pagpurnayan comes from the root word Purnay. It refers to the hand-crafted earthware goes from Megan City. But who place these are balls? We can use claim that these kinds of jars are much harder than other terracotta products found in the market. During colonial period, these are used for tea drinking, but now it is regarded as an excellent container to ferment brown sugar, basi, or sugarcane wine, sugarcane vinegar, and stamp bagoong or fish sauce. In Quigan, we actually have two jar factories, the beef factory and the most visited are new factory. Both are owned by Chinese persons. Going back, the process of making a Burnay jar starts off by combining locally sourced clay with a type of fine sand called anna. Two are mixed on a circular pit drum inside massive fields. These are so large, one of Burnay places we visited refers to theirs as the dragon wheel because of its length and it produces smoke just like dragons. To power this, Stocks and stocks of wood, kindles are used. It takes a bit of time to cook these jars, definitely longer than we can wait for. Through to its name, the Hidden Garden is located deep within the heart of Barangay Bulala of Vegan. Six years ago, Francis Flores, the owner of Hidden Garden, suffered from three heart attacks. Half of his body was paralyzed. He realized he changed his life, so he decided to start a garden for his therapy, but eventually turned into a business. Sprawling Garden started out as a personal venture, but he opened the place to public in 1991 and became a tourist spot. Here, one can find all sorts of ornamental plants for landscaping needs. Yes, they are for sale. After roaming around the garden, one can eat and cherish the Ilocano dishes like Puki Puki, Empanada, Pinakbet, and Sizzling Bagnet being served at Lilong and Lilang restaurant located inside the garden. After Vegan City was declared as one of the new seven modern cities of the world, Balwarte was named as one of the new seven theme parks of the world after Lilong. Balwarte is also known as home of Vegan Speed Fans. 
started to operate in the year 1991. The Balwarte or the Fortress is a must attraction for first-time visitors and even for those who have visited Bigan before. The reasons for its being on the list of places to visit are two. First is that it has a mini zoo with animals from other places and other endemic of the Philippines. It is a private collection and is therefore continuously being improved. The second reason is that it is owned by the former governor of Ilocosur, Honorable Luis Chavit Singson, a well-loved son of Bigan. Balwarte lies in hectares of land that stretches from the rolling plain towards the east, where the former governor's multi-story house sits with a grand view of Bigan and the south of China. You will immediately enter former governor Chavit Singson's own private wonderland and be welcomed by various birds and the petting suit of alpaca, ostriches, and miniature horses. The favorite attraction here where they offer carriage rides drawn by mini horses and rides for years. Don't be surprised to find an ostrich looking over your visitors and encouraged to interact with all the animals in the petting zoo, giving completely unique experience for the children. Aside from the various birds and mammals roaming around the general areas, Palwarta also offers butterfly garden located around the picnic area. We can see here all the preserved animals that are products of former government private citizens and in Sodom in different parts of the globe like South Africa, Zimbabwe, Australia, Sweden, and New Zealand to name a few. Some of these animals which is shipped to the Philippines are Nalapat, Crocodile, Bupalu, Rhino, Deer, Lion, Zebra, Hippopotamus, and Bear that now serve as the main attraction here. Abel Loom Weaving Abel is a traditional woven product of Vigan and the Ilocos region. The fabric is so strong and beautiful that some families have them as heirlooms that last as long as their antique furnishings. The Abel is made from yarns of cotton or sagot that are sourced from many lands in Luzon. After the cotton is harvested, it is prepared into yarns and dyed. The different colored yarns are then arranged in a wooden hand loom to create varied and unique designs. Barangay Kamangaan is the most known because of its huge production of Abel, being sold at shops in Pisolgo Street and in vegan public market. The tradition of Abel making is indeed fading so the DepEd included it in the curriculum of K-12 education among the secondary schools in the city. Vegan Heritage Village Vegan Heritage Village is where Ilocos region's rich culture and history are crafted into our name, architecture, furniture, and vegan ornaments. The major attraction of Vegan is its Mestizo history, which is built with sponge tag houses that evoke a vegan era when its people live prosperously because of the Manila Acapulco maritime trade. The houses are simple but lovely subjects Mainly for picture perfect shots with their roof of red tiles, thick walls, huge doors, and staircases, leading to rooms of high ceilings and sliding down these shell windows. Having survived many times, many calamities, the families who own these treasures have been the board to maintain them. Though, a trip to Cali Solo is enjoyable during the day, especially because of the opportunity to shop for Kiran's best products. I walk through it with magical at night. Since it is close to the visual topic at any time of the day, the stillness and shadows that come in the night adds more to the 18th century ambience of the lovely street that is close to town. The old historic belfry of the church known as the Bantaybel Tower, which served as a watchtower for pirates back in Spanish times, was the first in Luzon to establishing light in the church is one of the oldest church in the region. Before entering the church, you can see the Shrine of Our Lady of Charity or Shrine of Nuestra Señora de la Caridad, housing the miraculous image of Virgin Mary as Our Lady of Charity, crowned as the patroness of Ilohanja on January 12, 1956. And just in front of this shrine is the St. Augustine Church. The church was heavily damaged during World War II and rebuilding was started in 1950. The restored facade is of neo-geotic design mixed with pseudo-Romanesque materials and elements. It 
is designed to be grandiose, reminiscent of Spanish architecture. It uses materials such as bricks and mud. Behind the church is an open-air chapel called Chapel by the Ruins. This gardens-like ruins is said to be a part of a church that was once damaged during World War. 25 meters away from the church, the chapel is the 50 meters high bell tower, which has approximately 87 steps going up to the tower. At the top is where we can see the entire Philippine Sea, the West Philippine Sea, and the two congressional districts of Ilocos that is connected by the Banawang Bridge passing the Great Abra River. The belfry sits on the hilltop that was used as a watchtower for invading enemy forces during World War I and II because of its strategic location. Shukran! Buenos dias! Arigato gozaimasu! Agiyaman na! Thank you! Thank you for visiting Vigan City with us. We are the biggest tourism from the University of Northern Philippines, living in the condition. Continue traveling. Do what you love and love what you do. Just di kumuyo. Don't shoot me